Hi, welcome to the Penguin Post newspaper by kids. Today we are interviewing Ulrich. Ulrich started a biotech company, Evotech, in 1993 and was managing director of Cryogene. Let's ask him some questions. Why did you decide to start a company? Why did I start a company? Okay, uh, let me spend some time to explain really why this is being done, why I did this and why other people are doing it, some other people. Basically, in, in, we are all, at some point in time, need to earn some money to have a living. We need to buy things, we need a home and so forth, so we need to earn money. And there are basically two ways of doing this. One is you become an employee where you work for somebody else, and at the end of the month, you get a salary, you get a payment, monthly payments and that you can use for your living expenses. That's an employee. And there are some other people who are not employed, but are starting companies, are starting a business, and a business that needs employees and needs machines and all sorts of things. So normally they, invest their own money and sometimes also money from the bank in the business that they want to start and then this whole thing begins running and hopefully it's making some money so that the, the one who starts the business can pay the employees and can produce what he wants to produce or she wants to produce let me give you an example uh, a very simple example. Uh, Carmen is uh, interested in having a bakery. So normally, if you want to start a bakery, you need some money to buy a stove and pots and all sorts of things. And you need a shop where you have all these things. And normally, you also need someone to help you. That's costing some money. But uh, when you get all this together, you're basically an entrepreneur, you're on your own, and you're responsible for the business that you're making. In this case, the uh, bread baking. So two, two types of people. One wants to have a salary at the end of the month and be sure that the salary is being paid by a boss and the other one wants to have a business and make some money. And normally when you're starting, you're putting your own money in, in the business and buy a stove and buy all sorts of equipment that you need. And uh, then in the end, you hope to make more money than you put into the business. If it works well, then this would also work well. But uh, what I wanted to say is when you start a business, you decide not to be an employee. You want to be the boss of your own business. So you want to be the chief baker who sees that good bread by this baked for people. You want that your employees are being paid promptly at the end of the month and so forth. That's an employer. That's basically the entrepreneur who starts a business. So that's why why we start a business is to no longer be an employee, but be your own boss and hopefully in the end make some good money from the business that you're starting. So that's why I started the business and there's one other idea that is also very important Frequently, when, when you start a business, you're doing something that other people are also already doing, other businesses. You get back to the example of a bakery. There are many bakeries, yeah? And if you want to start a new bakery, you should be sure to be able to ultimately sell your bread and your cookies because there are all the other ones who want to do the same 
you have to find a way to make something that is better or different from what other people make. But that's an interesting uh, task to do that, to find out, can I do something that people like and particularly people need? Well, coming back to, to, my, uh, to your question, why did I start a company? Basically, because I saw that there was something that people needed, but it wasn't there. And I all of, all of a sudden felt it would be a great thing to start a company and make exactly the product that people would love to have. And then they would pay some money for it and we would make money in the end. What did your company do? What did my company do? Okay, let me continue on just trying to explain how this goes. Um, and I give you an example before I talk, talk about myself because it's a little bit difficult because we were developing what is called a technology, not a product. The product is a, is a piece of a, a, a loaf of bread, for example, or cookies, but a technology is something else. You will definitely immediately understand what a technology is if I point out the guys who founded Google, the Google company, they basically had a feeling they wanted to uh, develop a search machine that people can use to find out all sorts of things that exist in the world. So this machine is what they developed. It's nothing like a piece of bread they're selling ultimately having this machine you can do something with it and people can use the, the machine for their purposes now let me you understand the the, uh, the google example they were not selling little machines to people that they can use like computers to, to find out about things they had a huge search machine in their own company that they developed and that can be used through your computer can it can be uh, addressed and and you can use the the machine in our case now coming to your question what my company did we developed a technology that helped pharmaceutical companies to more quickly develop new pharmaceutical products now let me explain once again why is this important. You all know about the COVID situation right now, and that we what we want to, to have is either a vaccine or a drug that can heal COVID. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's and and if what is important right now is that something will be developed that we can use ultimately to heal COVID or avoid it. And it's a question of, of, of how quickly can you do this? Normally a pharmaceutical product that you ultimately take as a pill, for example, or a vaccine uh, takes many, many years to develop. And if you have a technology like a search machine, that helps you to develop a product against COVID more quickly, then you have a very interesting product that people want to have. And that is what my company did. Develop a technology that enabled people to more quickly develop a pharmaceutical product that helped healing some illness that we from time to time do get as people. I hope you, I made it clear. It's not, not quite easy to understand, but I, I think you can understand. If you think of the search machine, you can think we develop kind of a search machine for the pharmaceutical industry to make new, new drugs and, and new serums more quickly. That was what we were doing. And that was quite new. Nobody else could do that. We were the only one. 
What was the most exciting part of running a company? What is the exciting part of running a company? I'm... Yeah, you know, this goes back once again to, to how you begin to start a company. I, I said you need a good idea, like I want to make a, a such machine that all people would, would like to, to be able to use or something else. And you need some money initially and you can use your own money, but normally you need more money than you yourself have. You can go to the bank or you can find some other people who give you money, but they will all say, we want our money back in five years. And most, not only our money back, we want much more money back than we gave you. Otherwise we would not give it to you. So you promise to somebody, if you give me money to build my business, then I'll give it back to you and more, much more than you've given me initially. So uh, what is most exciting when you have a company and you develop something is to see that what you want to develop really gets more and more to become what it was supposed to be, what you decided it should be. Once again, the search machine should be able to answer any question. If you develop initially a machine like this, it will not be able to answer all questions. It will, develop, it will answer many questions, but not all of them. But you want the machine to, to answer all questions. And therefore you need to develop and develop and develop and, and you, you're making progress. And you see that you're getting to the point where the machine can nearly answer all questions. And that's very exciting because you promised to people and to yourself that you could do something and then you try to do it. And then you see you're making progress. It's getting better and better and better. That is very exciting. What was the most difficult part of running a company? Uh, There's two things. Firstly, uh, if a company needs much money uh, to uh, be able to, to finally uh, reach what, what it wants to do to, to make the product, then you need to see that you always have enough money to, to keep the company going. And let me very simply say, in, in most cases, when you found a company, you need other people to help you. That's the employees I was talking about earlier on. Yeah, you need people who will help you and you want to pay these people and you want to be sure that at the end of the month, the company has enough money to pay all their employees. Okay. And that's not quite easy because in the when you start a company, it isn't making money, it is using up money. And so you have to be sure that you always have enough money to be able to continue to uh, pay your people and pay other expenses that are connected with running the business. And that is, I would say, relatively difficult. The other thing is you have, let's say 10 people. And because not everything works out as you would like it to work out, people need to be sure that ultimately you will be able all together with your employees to reach the goal that you have set out. And to keep people motivated that they believe we are going to be successful in the end is not easy. So I would say that's, that's a difficulty because they, they all need to, to be convinced that ultimately we will get where we want to get. Mm. That is like a like a, a soccer football team. If people do not believe that they will win, they will not win. So the trainer in a, in a soccer team must always be working with his people 
and be sure that they are all convinced that in the end they will beat the other team. Yep. And it's not easy. Not easy. People, people are not easy to handle in that respect. So you have to be very convincing. Okay. How did Next. you stay motivated to keep going? Uh, I think I've, I've uh, answered that question nearly. I mean, the, the first thing is you promise something and you are very motivated if you can tell people we are making progress to, to reach what we promised we would reach. We are making progress to develop the product that we promised we would be able to develop. That's very, very motivating. And also, it is very interesting to see if, if everybody in the company is convinced that we are all going to be successful and, and be able to, to reach the goal that we wanted to reach. And thirdly, uh, what the uh, one who founded the company also hopes is that in the end, when the product is developed and the business really running well, the person who started the company and also the others are making a good amount of, of money. So that's motivating too. So if you, you do your, your stuff well, you will in the end, most probably earn a good amount of money. That's motivating too, to be completely honest. When you were a kid, what did you want to be when you grew up? Uh, I wanted to be a scientist, first of all, which I became. And then also as a kid already, like you, I was interested in having my own business. So not be an employee, but do my own thing. But that is not easy because it is, there's quite a number of risks. You need money to put in and you have to, to, to do something so that the money gets more and more. And that's not, not easy. But anyway, I, I wanted to be a scientist and I wanted ultimately to have my own business. <laughs> Are we still having questions? That was so cool. We learned a lot from you and thank you for your time. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>